Hey you all, what's all right to fellow dressmakers? You're welcome to another interesting tutorial. My name is Confidence. Today we'll be learning how to make this beautiful flay dress. It's a full flay with a cape sleeves. So if you're interested in something like that, kindly watch this video to the very end. I'll be using this beautiful Ankara fabric. I have about six yards which I won't be using all. So the first thing we will do now is to fold the fabric to cut out the flay first. And as you can see, my fabric is already folded. When I measure it, I have about 35 inches here. And the length I'm working with is 28 inches. The remaining 7 inches, I'll be using that for the radius. Just as you can see me do later. So I'll go ahead and fold the fabric again. From this edge here, I'll hold it and fold it to be this A shape like this. Fold it to the part that is folded. Just watch something like this. And after folding, I'll go ahead and take my measuring tape and measure where I will have my round waist. Remember that you are cutting two flay, meaning that you are dividing our waist circumference by two. So my waist is 32 and I'm cutting, this one I'm cutting, I'm cutting with a radius of 16 inches. So just as you can see me do here, I mark 6 inches from the part that is pointed. I mark 6 inches round and that gives me 18 inches which is okay. I'm looking for 16 inches actually so the other two inches will be extra which is very okay for me but if you want exactly your waist circumference just make sure you have six and uh, 16 inches there meaning that you can go up instead of doing six inches round you go ahead and do five inches or even four and a half now from that radius i'll go ahead and mark my 28 inches and connect Don't forget to notch the center after you are done cutting. This is what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and use this one now to trace the second one. And as you can see, my fabric is folded and I place the flay on it. I know it's kind of hard to see it, but I place the already cut flay on another folded fabric to cut the second flay. And again don't forget to notch the center now let's go to the upper part i'll be cutting the back first first i'll go ahead and mark my zipper allowance of one inch after marking that out i'll go ahead and roll it out like so now this will be our zipper line the next thing i'll do now is to take my half length measurement which is 16 inches but i'm adding extra one inch making it 17 inches one inch for allowance sewing allowance so now we'll start from this lines to be taking our measurement first i'll start from that zipper line and um, allowance and take my shoulder measurement divided by two my shoulder measurement is 16 inches and i'm marking eight inches there i'll go down to eight and a half as my um, armhole length and i'll go ahead and roll it out like so next i'll go ahead and take my round bust measurement plus extra one inch as allowance and on the waistline i'll first slant the waistline because the center back is not straight i usually do this i slant by one inch like so and then from that one inch one inch i'll take my round waist measurement plus extra one inch a seam allowance and I'll connect it like so and curve the armhole just as you can see me do here for the neckline I'm using four inches by three and a half four as width and then the depth is three and a half and I'll come down by half inch at the shoulder line to slant the shoulder like so now the next thing i'll do is to replace the one inch zipper allowance like you see me do here i'll go ahead and mark one inch like this and it will still be slanted just as you can see it here
I'll cut, 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 cut all the mat line. And the next thing I like to do is to also slant the waistline because the front waist and the back waist is not the same. I'll just go ahead and slant one inch upward like so. This way, your zipper won't budge at the back. I'll trim all the excess and then we can do the front segment. I'll start by marking the starting point here. This line here will be our starting point. So from there, I'll go ahead and take my 17 inches waist line measurement, half length measurement, and lay it out like so. Next, I'll take my shoulder measurement divided by two. And then from there, I'll go down to eight and a half, which is my armhole length. Take the eight inches again, which is my shoulder measurement divided by two, just to make sure that the line is straight. And then from that shoulder line, I'll just go ahead and take my round bust measurement of extra one and a half allowance. And on the waistline, I'll take my waist measurement divided by four plus extra one inch. I want and have an extra one inch for that, just like so. I'll cover the armhole, but before that, I'll slant the uh, shoulder with one inch. Remember, we did have for the back, the front part is one inch, and then from that shoulder slanting, I'll measure down to the armhole length, and whatever I have, I divide that by two. I have seven inches which is seven and a half from that middle point i'll go ahead and come in by half, half an inch and use the straight part of my ruler to connect it like so now I'll use the curvy part of the ruler to curve this part just as you can see me do here next we'll be taking our dart i'm using four inches four inches and then i will measure the length i want the length of the dart to be seven inches another way you can do it is to measure your bust point and go down by one inch if your bust point is nine you go down by one inch which will make it ten so this is okay for me and i'll connect the line like so now on that line i will remember we added one inch as our that allowance i'll go ahead and mark half inch on both on both sides of this that leg i don't know if you understand just as i as i'm doing here we'll half an inch on both sides making it one inch that we added as our that allowance now for the neckline i'm using four inches by four inches four by four four for width and then the depth is four inches and i'll go ahead and cut following the lines that I have here. I'll cut, 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 cut. I'll cut every other thing except the dart. So for the dart, I'll just notch the three lines that you see here. The dart leg and the two sides. So by the time I want to join, it won't be hard for me. I already have the notch there. So I'll just follow that notch and then join my dart. Stitch my dart. So basically this is what we have so far i'm gonna have to cut the line i'm using the same fabric for the line on both the front and then the back now to cut the cape i'll go ahead and place my uh, front and back bodies like this just the same way it would be after joining the shoulder let's assume we join the shoulder now you place it like this and then go ahead and measure this detail should be going towards the dart, so take note of that. So I'll pivot my measuring tape like this and then measure the length that I want. I want it to be 10 inches from the shoulder down to the waist, 10 inches. And on the back too, I want it to be 10 inches. Or, by the time I measure it, I have 20 inches. So another way you can do it is to, is to start from the from your waistline and then mark up where you want the cape to stop and then mark for the back too and then measure from the front to the back whatever length you have that will be the length of your cape i hope you understand 
now to cut i have my fabric here i'll go ahead and fold it like so it's unfold so after folding i'll measure the 10 inches which is the length of the cape plus extra one inch as allowance making it 11 inches so 11 inches here and I'll roll it out just to indicate where the 11 inches is. Now, on this center part here, this part that is folded, I'll go up by 2 inches. 2 inches. You can do 1 inch. But I like doing 2 inches. So, 2 inches and then you slant it to the length of this. Now, you will determine the length of the cape. I want it to be 6 inches. And then again, you slant it like so now let's cut to see what we have i'll follow the lines that i have here the mark that i have here and then cut after cutting this is what it looks like we have six inches as length you can do more or even less by the time you measure it down to the length you will see that it's the measurement is reducing so I'll go ahead and use that to cut another extra three pieces. Now this is all that we have. We have the flay, we have the front bodies, we have the back, we have the lining and then we have the cape which is four in total. I'll be using the same fabric as the lining and I have paper stay. I cut two which I'll be going to the main fabric of the cape. And then I have gum stay. I have two pieces each. For the lining this is because this uh, gum stay is very light so i would recommend to use a cola stay or even clinoline whichever works for you but i'll be using this because this is what i have at the moment now i'm using these sh very short sleeves because the owner wants the sleeves so i'm not talking much about it because it's not part of the part of what you are making now that you are done with all of that um we are going to start joining all, all of this and i want to add pocket to the flay part i want the length to be nine inches just very short pockets i want the length to just be nine inches and then the width is um four inches this four inches is another way you can do it is just spread your hand like this and then measure what you have so whatever you have just make sure it's something that can contain your hand by the time you want to put it to your sleeves i'll cover it like you see here and then cut it out i'll be using this to cut an extra three pieces because each side is two pieces so i'll have four pieces in total when you are done with that let me show you how to do it you take two two of the pocket piece and then spread your flay like this from the waistline you come down by four inches four inches is not standard depends on, depending on how low you want your pocket to be four inches is okay for me and then i'll place one of the pocket piece like so right side facing right side and then join it first i'll measure four inches on that side again take the pocket piece right side facing right side and i'll place it like this it will be coming in it will be on top of the flay by the time you want to join i'll do the same for the other one to have something like this can you see i'm gonna have to join it now i will take the second flay and then we'll go ahead and join it together now what you will do is to take your pin to pin everything together and then start joining when you get to this part you corner you are not covering you corner like so and then sew it round come out again and then a sharp corner like so now make sure that the allowance you started from the up is what you will use all the way to the down i hope you understand it's time for the upper part i'm gonna have to um, close the cape like so and i have this opening that i used to turn it out you can go ahead and use gum to close it or you just leave it because you'll still be joining it to your main 
fabric you'll be stitching that part that is open for the upper part i'm gonna have to stitch my dart for both the main fabric and the lining remember there's no dart at the back and i'll join the shoulder and close the zipper area so now that we are done with that i'll now take the cape and then make sure i have the middle part of this cape here after measuring the middle point i'll just mark it i'm not not you know i just mark it like so and then place it that middle part to the center part of the shoulder like so and then place it i'm giving a uh, like one inch space you can decide not to give a space you can decide to even give two inches space and then you join it remember we say that this thing will be going towards the dart so go ahead and join it make sure you have the center to center and then you join it today that towards the dart area for the back remember there is no dart for the back so what you will do is to take your measuring tape and then measure what you use for your dart mine is four inches but i marked five inches remember we have one inch as our zipper allowance and i'm marking five inches for that so i'll go ahead and make sure i join this cape towards that five inches that i mark it is that simple so i'll start from there join it all the way to the other end now this is what it looks like after joining i've also gonna have to join the sleeves and close the sides with my measurements and this is the cape it's already given next thing i'll do is to take it to my sewing machine and then top stitch just to secure both the lining and the fabric of the upper bodies now for the flay, you remember we did not give any zipper space so i'll go ahead and cut through the center of one of it one of the flay. i'm not cutting it all the way to the down I'll ju i'm just cutting it like eight inches or thereabouts and then the next thing i'll do is to determine the center of this upper bodice like so i'll notch the center And after notching, I will take the flay and also knot the center part of it. You already have a notch there, so you do not need to notch again. And then go to my sewing machine and stitch. Make sure that the joining at the side, that the sides are uniform. So you have excess. Remember I said I want excess. I want this uh, flay to be as full as possible, but not too full. <laughs> so i'll make sure i have the side to side side joining to side joining and i'll go ahead and join the rest now this is what it looks like after joining i'm also gonna have to fix my zipper and we are done and like i said for the zipper area i did not cut it all the way to the down i stitched it slightly just like this something like this just the same way you used to join your dart just that same way that's how i did it so it won't be too obvious at the back i do not want to cut it all the way to the down i'm also gonna have to hem the down part neatly like so and our gown is ready so this will be the end of our tutorial i'll see you in my next video be good bye